Longer ago than I care to admit, I made this. This is the Happy Yogurt. It is not the full SIBO yogurt, it's just El Ruderai yogurt. And it's just been sitting in my fridge. <laughs> so, you see, um, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead, turn this over. This is the first batch, so it's really separated. I doubt, I don't think you can see that on camera. I'm trying to get it to focus on it. It's very separated, lots of curds and whey. And I made this inside of this jar and I used my dehydrator. I have an Excalibur dehydrator so I can just take this, put it right in there and it regulates the temperature, you know, fairly well. However, recently I have acquired this and we're gonna use it today to turn this batch over. So I also, see, making this is super easy. I made it a while ago. I, I did film myself making this. It's really simple. All you do is you take uh, the El Ruderai tablets, you take 10 of them, crush them up. I just use the flat end of my meat tenderizer and inside of a Ziploc bag, I hit them until they crushed up really small. And then you're supposed to add that to some milk and some inulin powder. I forgot the inulin powder, so I don't know how much that affects the fermentation of it, but at any rate, then you just uh, mix that with the rest of the milk and mix it up again. You can't use a blender because that kind of damages the bacteria in there, but then you just put it inside of a jar, let it ferment at 100 degrees Fahrenheit for 36 hours. I did that and then I just left it in the fridge and I haven't touched it since. <laughs> I did make it one other time, but I did not I did not save any of the last bits, so I had to make it again. So we're gonna go ahead and try out my new yogurt maker and we're gonna make ourselves some SIBO yogurt. So we gotta make this, we gotta mix this up in a separate thing. I'm really hoping my half and half is still good. I bought it a while ago. Smells good. So with the, yo with the yogurt, you're supposed to start out with ultra high temp pasteurized milk. So that's what I have, or half and half part. You're supposed to start out with ultra high temp pasteurized half and half. I wanna know if I can make this with raw milk. So I'm gonna do the first several batches of this with the half and half, and then I'm gonna try switching it over and see what happens. So I'm just gonna mix up our old batch. After the first batch or two, it's not supposed to get like that. Mix in two tablespoons of inulin. I'm doing the inulin first because it's gonna get the tablespoon wet, so. Oh. And then you use two tablespoons of the previous yogurt to inoculate it. Let's go with three, why not? And we're just gonna stir that all up. Basically, you just wanna dissolve the inulin and the yogurt. That's kind of the purpose of this. Making sure there's no inulin hanging out on the bottom. That's been my case. Give it a good mix. Make sure that the bacteria, the Elruderite, is spreading in the whole thing. Because we're gonna separate these into eight little jars. This is my first time using um, this yogurt maker, so I'm not sure about the levels of how to much to fill it. I just want it evenly spread amongst the jars. I'll let the foam settle. And while I read the directions. So then we're just gonna put these caps on our yogurt. And then we're gonna fill up the internal basin to be about the same level as the milk inside. And Cover it with the lid. Hold on, I'm gonna move this in place. Then, we want the temperature. We'll go with that. There we go. 36 hours, and I will bring you back when we're done so we can see how much this separated. Um, it's entirely possible that that jar is not good. It's not active because uh, it's been in the fridge for probably at least a month. It's been in the fridge for this long. I'll look at my old files and see when I filmed that, but I will see you guys back here tomorrow because um, that's gonna be done. Oh, it's not gonna be done tomorrow. It's gonna be done the day after tomorrow in the morning. It's 6.53, so it'll be done not tomorrow morning, but the following morning, but tomorrow is moving kombucha day to the kitchen, so. That should be fabulously boring, but I'll bring you along for it so you can see what's going on. All right, it's morning. 
and I'm just getting ready to start closing up the ferments so that I can start to move them. I am, however, realizing that I <clears throat> have one major issue. <laughs> the way that I'm planning on moving these things, I don't have enough boxes to be able to do it. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit of experimenting because see, I have a grand total of two cases that I can load ferments into. That's half of what I have. Maybe that actually would be enough. I'm rethinking my whole strategy. So these are the coffee kombuchas that I made. And the way that I have moved them in the past, it, oh, hang on. Basically what I do is saran wrap. Make sure it's making good contact there. And a lid. That way the kombucha is not coming in contact with the metal lid. These I can just throw away, but I do save the rubber bands. And then I'll just do these to all of the ones possible. All the ones that I am going to be bringing. Probably wouldn't be such a big deal, but my driveway is wretched. It is horrific, and everything in here has to be packaged very well, or when I get there, you know, a quarter of this stuff will have leaked out, and my boxes will just be soaked, and they won't, um, they won't be good for much of anything after that. So I'm just gonna finish packaging the rest of these up and then I gotta start loading up the truck. I did take a load of like bottles and, and equipment to the kitchen already because I was already going to be heading in that direction on Saturday. So when I was there on, when I was going that way on Saturday, it did take, it wasn't a full load, but you know, it was what I could gather together to bring. So I just, I didn't waste a trip. So I will see you guys back here in a few. I'm still not sure, but I think, I think I'm going to try and keep put these boxes inside of a cooler just to give them an extra layer of protection while I'm traveling with them. It is pretty cold today. And you know, just driving, you don't want to have, I mean, they are sealed very well, put the lids on very tight. It's got the saran wrap, but you know, still better to be safe than sorry, right? We are locked and loaded, ready to go. I already ate myself some breakfast and that should probably be enough that I won't need to eat for the rest of the day. So I just need to go grab some coffee, you know, grab some of my stuff, like my purse and notebooks and stuff like that. And then we go on a hit the road. We made it. Very few, very little seepage. There was some, but not very much. Most of them are completely full. There was just some kind of in the box underneath it, which is totally understandable. I'm just getting ready to clean and sanitize all the jars. And then we're gonna turn over about half of the kombucha. Reason for this is that I don't want to have to do all of this kombucha in one period. So I'm gonna try and eventually get to the point where it's like a quarter of my kombucha gets turned over once a week. Like one day of the week, that's my kombucha day. That's when I do it all. Um, I th feel like that will be more manageable, less prone for to burnout. So um, I forgot to bring a battery, so I can't show you guys very much of that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work. So today. I finished all the stuff that I needed to do at the kitchen. I got everything uh, turned over. I got, I think like three cases made and I doubled half of my stash. 
So I turned eight into 16. However, the rest of the day is a little bit of bad news bears. While I was um, at the kitchen, <laughs> uh, my son did not know what was going on with the yogurt. He unplugged it so that he could make toast. He unplugged this right here. Meanwhile, there's an outlet there with nothing in it. There's an outlet over here with nothing in it. And I'm not very happy. He's very apologetic. He did, he, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why he did that. So needless to say, I have my live stream here in about a half an hour, uh, my usual Monday night live. It's at 7.30 central time for anybody wondering. You can log in and we have a lot of fun, answer a lot of questions and just, you know, have a good old time. So that's in about a half an hour. After my live, I'm gonna make a new batch because it was cold when I got here. He claimed it was only half an hour and I was like, so you um, like, it was not a half an hour. It was a very long time. So thankfully I still have the original that I had made that one from. So, um, you know, it's not like no loss because you know, it's a quart of half and half, which isn't super cheap, but at least it can be recovered because I still have the, the original batch that I can use to inoculate it. And then when I got home, I came out here to check on things. Uh, oh, two good things. Robert on his day off got these all topped off with wood chips and then Malachi on his day off, he topped off these with wood chips. So that garden is ready to go. Or should I say it's ready to grow. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's about all the good. Oh, over here. I was correct in that it took me probably about an hour to get this one bed weeded with the larger stirrup hoe. I didn't get around to actually raking it and kind of sifting through it. All I did was just, I did the stirrup hoe and when I was finished, I was done. However, I did hear in the video where I was showing you, talking about doing that, I had a couple comments who said, if I wet the soil, it'll make it significantly easier to work with. So I'm gonna try that, see if it is accurate and it is easier to work with. Makes sense. But over here, bad news bears, you guys. Turn the fan off because it's too loud. 359 tomato starts. If I had to guess, half of them are dead. I think it's, I think it's the soil I bought from Costco. I can't see another reason as to why, but I got some pretty dang sad looking tomatoes. So oddly enough, I started about 300 tomato seeds. Actually double that because there was two in each cell. I'm gonna end up having to buy tomatoes most likely. This sucks. Pretty much all of these ones over here are dead. Just about all of them. Some of them might make it, most of them are not. Um, some of them look fine. Some of them I will be most likely usable. You know, they don't look tremendously strong, but you know, obviously some of them I transplanted too young, but that's not the only problem. So that is very, very, very unfortunate, but you know, well, <laughs> there's not much I can do about it at this point. It's too late to really start much of anything t to get a production from it. And um, like fairly close to me is like an Amish greenhouse where I can purchase tomato starts for about 50 cents a piece. And coming up here on May 4th, for anybody who's local, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be vending at the May Fest in Mountain Grove on May 4th. And after that, that should free me up to be able to purchase uh, more tomato starts and it looks like that's just unfortunately the route that I'm gonna have to take this year. They have all kinds of stuff. I checked them out this today to kind of see what they had. They do have a tremendous amount of um, peppers. They don't have a lot of really hot peppers, but they do have peppers, like sweet peppers. They have tomatoes, they have tons of herbs. They have a massive collection, a selection of flowers. They have all kinds of stuff. So, you know, 
it's not gonna work out for me. I mean, 50 cents a plant, uh, plant and they're in the four cells, so they're like four of them, for, I think they're 209. And you know, they're they're pretty dang good size tomato starts. So if I buy them in the middle of May, in the beginning of May, I should be just be able to pretty much throw them directly in the ground. And I looked at the varieties, they have some good ones. They have a few heirloom varieties, but they have a lot of more production style ones, which is, honestly is probably what I should have started to begin with. But <laughs> at any rate, it is time for me to go inside, upload this video, get it edited, and um, t time for my live stream here in probably like 20 minutes or so. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Give me some tips on how to revive some tomato starts because this video is going up in the morning. So whatever advice that you guys have for me in order to hopefully revive some of those ones that are still alive but are looking really sad. I would love your tips, your tricks. Let me know what I should do with this one because I am at a loss. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, sauerkraut.